Okay. All right, so we are live. So that's we what uh, my system says, but I can't see it on my phone yet. So give okay. me a moment. But we are live. We are live, yes. So I can hello, see it on my phone everybody. Yet. Somebody is already I'm here. To mute myself. I'm going to mute myself on the phone. Mm -hmm. Oops, okay. Just muted my phone. Okay, okay. Uh, not yet. Uh, people will will receive notifications, so they'll they'll okay. they'll join us. Yeah. So, welcome everyone, and um, not yet on live yet, but people will be watching this on recording. So we we can welcome everybody who's watching us live, hopefully soon, and and everyone who's going to be watching the recording. So welcome us all. <laughs> Welcome, Moon, and welcome everybody watching the, the recording. It's such a pleasure to be in service for all of you here today. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I'm going to um, begin sharing something about you. Okay. Okay. So, um, so give me a moment. So I'm going to pull your bio so those of you who, who are watching us so this is a mini master class on slowing down to achieve more okay so um so i'm going to try pronouncing your last name azul okay so <laughs> i have azul leguzamon is 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 that close enough perfect yeah okay. yeah yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> okay so azul is from argentina okay and um, she is a life coach Okay. And she is in service to the world. Okay, now that's a word I want you to kind of keep in mind, and 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 we'll talk about service and serving people. Okay, in with Azul. In fact, that's the word I I kind of I've fallen in love with. Okay, after meeting you. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll go there in a moment. So. Um, so you are a certified rewilding guide, okay, which is a 3D mm -hmm. school, a yeah. literary translator, mm -hmm. a project manager, a school teacher, a mother and wife. Mm -hmm. okay. And you have been exploring the three principles, the inside out paradigm since 2019 and took a deep dive into them through the rewilding guide training program. Exactly. And what I also know about you, which, which I'm, I'm beginning to learn is about your past, okay? About your traumatic experience growing up, okay? Hmm. And as a young adult uh, that has moved you to explore different paths for looking for healing, healing hmm. spaces. And that's when you were able to get a glimpse of quote, psychological innocence, unquote, okay, of, of your biological family. Now, if you don't know what psychological innocence is, my friends, you can Google that later, okay? So, um, and, but, sorry, go on, Azul, you want to say something? No, no, and we can, we can just point out that it's a way that in the community of the three principles, it's just a way of saying that psychological innocence means that everybody's innocent and doing their best that they can with their thinking that they have at that very moment. It's yes. just understanding that. We are not condoning certain actions. We're just understanding that everybody's doing the best they can with their thinking that they have at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And that includes everybody. No exceptions. <laughs> no exception. Yeah. So, and and the way you have mentioned that when you when you came to terms with the psychological innocence of your biological family, you felt that your soul was restored, mm -hmm. and you were able to connect deeply with life, exploring multiple ways to be in service for people. Mm -hmm. And you are a very passionate student of life, which I can see. <laughs> and you love supporting people to connect with the freedom of living a guided life 
by understanding how our mind really works. I like the word really works. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's, that's Azul for you, friends, whoever, um, if you don't know Azul. Is there anything else you want, you want to say apart from what I've mentioned in the bio or what I managed to get? No, it's okay. I, I, I think you have mentioned everything that is possible. And, and like, you know, I, I'm very comfortable to being in service, but not being in the spotlight so much. <laughs> so I wouldn't add I know a, more about myself. Like, I mean, I, I'm learning to be more um, visible, like uh, yeah. just because that's useful to help people. Yeah. But no. it's not about me. It's about this understanding and what we are learning all together. Yeah, I, I remember that. Like, that's how we met you, right? So, so one of the things you do, which, which I think I did not mention, is um, you support a lot of 3P teachers like Mavis, mm -hmm. Dickin, yeah, and quite yeah. a few others, right? And, yeah. and, and I met you in, in one of the Mavis's programs, right? And that, that's, that's how I kind of um, got a glimpse of you. Let me put it that way. Got a glimpse of you, yeah? Now, what is interesting to me is, I don't like spotlight either. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Exactly, right? So when you told me that um, we, um, you are doing something, right, around uh, time and slowing down and stuff like that, and... It was interesting, like when I when I offered you, okay, so how about we do this Facebook Live? Now, it's not about doing Facebook Live, okay? Because mm -hmm. I've done Facebook Live uh, many times with my brother, okay, with another good friend and colleague, Leslie. Right? She is the one who who introduced me to the the the, pre, the three principles, okay? But it's about managing logistics okay right the platform and stuff like that which i've never done which i thought oh that's too much for me right that's tech bit i'm not good with tech and blah 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 stuff which i kept on telling myself mm -hmm. but when i told you yes i, I was going like i'm not gonna do that <laughs> and that lasted for a moment and then i'm going to find that out and here i am and I'm noticing how simple this is, okay? Mm. Um, and that also gave me preview to how much, um, excuse me for the language I'm going to use here, friends, how much crap I give myself, okay? About my own story, about who I think I am and what I can do and what I cannot do. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a perfect example of, like seeing how our mind works because we have stories in our mind about everything you know like oh i'm going to do this technological thing oh my god i don't know it's going to be hard blah 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 a lot of thinking around that but one thing is that if you are doing it and you find the challenge and then you you think about oh how how can i solve this like it's it's being hard for me that thinking would be related with reality at that very moment but usually we have a lot of thinking when we are not even doing the, the thing that we are thinking about and that also has a very special link with time uh, management that we're going to talk today like the way we use energy from our body from our mind for things that are not happening right now and that are not based in reality, they are just fantasies. And we are very used to do that. So it's, it's like leaving that place more and more and more. I had a lot of thinking, not around technology, but around being seen, you know, like uh, going live or making programs or whatever. Um, but I realized that as soon as I move myself to, be, to being in service, then that thinking, that thinking goes away, you know, because it's not about me, it's about being in service to others. So if it's about being in service to others, all those fears or whatever, they go, they go away because I'm already like centered in how can I help? 
not uh, I'm not thinking about I'm, if I'm doing it a good job, like uh, how they are going to see me. It's not about me at all. So I think that I can see, you know, that it's the same process. It's the same process, like understanding that our mind, our personal mind, sometimes they they have a narrative around whatever. Like if you look at to a chair, you you're going to hear a voice saying, "I like that chair. I don't like that chair. I would prefer it in a different color." Why did I buy it? Or I love that chair. Whatever. They, we have a narrative about anything. Yeah. So, and I think that's when you find it, when you realize that, and you start finding it hilarious, life becomes easier. Yeah. And and to me, what <clears throat> what's interesting is, um, by the way, just before I go there, for those of you who are watching us. Um, Whatever we are sharing today is not rules. <laughs> these are not rules. Okay, these are not suggestions, and these are not. I'm not sure if you would call it tools. Okay, I'm. I'm not sure if you want to use the word tools. Okay, but we are going to be offering invitations. Okay, today, right? Invitation for you to listen from an open mind and an open heart okay mm -hmm. and an invitation to play <laughs> right with whatever you're hearing new go and play real time instead of intellectually trying to figure out how does that work what do you mean by that okay <laughs> what where did you see that word you, you know getting hung with words right mm -hmm. and, and I wouldn't know if you would say this as so like, I, this is my disclaimer to everybody who's listening. I may not have the right words today, but the intention for both of us today is to help you with something which you're experiencing, which only you can unlock yourself out of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very clear. Okay, that doesn't change, right? So the exactly. moment you realize that you are the one who can unlock yourself, okay, whatever we are gonna we are saying is gonna make sense. So don't get stuck with the words what we are using because the words are only pointing to some truths about the way our mind works, the way we work, irrespective of that, irrespective of the narrative, like you said, okay. I have a lot of narratives about me, a lot of stories about me, okay? Like my growing up years and blah, blah, blah. That has nothing to do with me in the moment right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So that's, there is this freedom for me to create and, and, um, and serve, okay? And serve people, um, so anybody who I come in contact with from that space where, so like you said, you spoke about spotlight. <clears throat> so here is the paradox for me. It's about me, but it's not about me. <laughs> it's not about the me in my head. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I'd say it. The, the me I created in, in my head, like Mudassar is this guy, okay? He's good at this, he's bad at this, he's this, he's that, the labels we put like like post-it notes on our faces right and i yeah. and i've been walking around all my life uh carrying those post-it notes telling people i'm an introvert okay i am this i am that okay but what i what i know now okay when i say no is the truth okay how, how we are all made the universal truth is we're not born with labels Hmm. we're not born with personalities <laughs> we are born clean without no perspective no perception of the world we're mm -hmm. born clean like a clean slate mm -hmm. but we learn to perceive things that's how we make sense of everything around us like for example hand h-a-n-d hand mm -hmm. otherwise i would not or what to call this, <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, <clears throat> but what we are pointing to, I wouldn't know if you would say this, is something beyond our sense-making machine called our brain, 
What we are pointing mm -hmm. to today is our innate, our natural capacity to create and serve, to live from that space. Okay? And I'm saying this natural capacity, which means we are born with it. We don't learn to, to acquire that. But we forget mm -hmm. it, obviously, of, for in, in my case, 35 years of conditioning, right, of how, who I am and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> So, so here, here is my, my, my question to you, um, which is what I think we, in a way, we are already talking about slowing down. This word slowing down, what is that? As well, what would you say is slowing down? Because that's a very confusing word these days. Many people have their own ideas of, of slowing down. Some, somebody told me in the message to me, um, slowing down is boring. Now, I wanted to ask this person, like, what do you mean by slowing down? Tell me about that, and then I'll tell you if it's boring or not. So what would you say is slowing down? Wonderful question. So in fact, slowing down means living, following our natural rhythm. Our society, the way that everything works around us, has been telling us to go faster, get it now, you know, think about your future, live in your future. Like we are running from one task to the next next task. Even when we are when we are children, we are being asked, very very young children, we are being asked like, what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to become a doctor? Are you going to become the like we are running constantly? So that's unnatural actually so because we are doing something unnatural we need to slow down to go back to our nature so i remember the first time i started reading about slowing down i thought oh that must be boring you know i'm not for that i love doing things like i i picture myself that slowing down was like just i don't know laying down and do nothing watch the clouds go by, and, and it's not at all about that. It's about slowing down enough to be present at this very moment. So let's say we're having this conversation. If while we are talking, I'm thinking about what I should do next, you know? Okay, when I finish this Facebook, I have to do this, I have this client, blah, 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 my daughter, my husband, blah, I'm not here. So if I'm not here, I'm not really listening. I'm not really connecting. So I'm actually missing parts of information. I'm not really here. So slowing down is related to being at the present moment. Do we need to do things to be at the present moment? No, we are always at the present moment. It's the natural thing to do. But we get distracted. We get distracted. So we forget, and and I, I I'm not here to say, hey, I'm an expert on this. I live in the present moment. Every second of my life is not like that. I'm a student of life. I'm getting better. If I compare my life from like even the last six months, it, there has been a huge change. But I'm saying that for sure, for everybody that has children, it happens sometimes that your your child tells you like in, in my case, like mommy, mommy, mommy. And sometimes I'm like, yes, dear, tell me. And she's like, no, no, look at me. And she realized quickly if I'm not connected, for sure. You know, she knows. Even if I pretend, she knows. And sometimes when I'm not listening to her, I'm not really um, getting what she's trying to tell me. So I keep moving forward without that information. So, so by slowing down, you connect deeply with the people that you love with your clients, with your business. You have better ideas. Your creativity has space to flow, you know, and show you more things. If you look at children when they are very young, because we, we quickly uh, teach them how to move faster, you know, but if you look at the child when it's, I don't know, two, three years old, and they are drawing, if you look at that, they are absolutely focused relaxing like here are the clouds there's a tree they are completely connected with that 
and they enjoy it very deeply. Now, just imagine the same kid, you know, drawing, okay, after drawing, I have to take a bath, then I have to do this, blah, 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 they make it. The joy of life gets lost. So what we are pointing out is that life is a gift. So let's bring some common sense to that. If you give me a gift, and I unwrap it quickly, you know, and like watch it quickly, and okay, thank you very much. Like, oh my God, you know, such a waste. So what happens when you give me a gift? And I like, oh, thank you, my friend. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for taking me this. And, and like I unwrap it with, with love and care, and I see it, and I wonder, and I enjoy it. Such a deep experience. So by slowing down, we're pointing people to really enjoy the gift of life because it is a gift. Yeah. I don't know if I if this is too no, I'll, I'll, if I was I'm, clear I'm enough. I'm loving what you're saying. Um, uh, I'm just going to remind our friends, okay, who are watching us, that if you've got questions, please type it, okay. Um, oh, there you go. Antonio is saying, "I love the gift metaphor." Okay, so. Antonia. Fantastic. <laughs> Antonia. All right. Okay. Sorry, Antonia. Right. I'm getting, I'm getting used to, to the names. <laughs> so um, type in your questions, type in your comments, like what you're hearing. Okay. And all right. Like Shaila, um, she's a good friend and, and she's saying so clear and what a fabulous perspective. That's to you, by the way. Okay. As well. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So you can type in your comments, friends, like, like what our friends are already doing, what you're hearing, like, like type it in there. We want to make this real. And that's why we're calling it a mini masterclass. Okay. We're calling it mini because we have an R together. That's it for now, for now, for, now. for today. Yes. Okay. So when you said gifts and when you said slowing down is about being in this moment, right? Which is, which is, which is the only real thing. <laughs> everything else is an absolute lie we keep telling ourselves okay which is an innocent lie about my past which doesn't exist and about my future which hasn't happened yet so it doesn't mm -hmm. exist either <laughs> we all know this deep inside us and we all know this intellectually yet I noticed this, I don't know, urge, the urge to get somewhere, like, like quickly get somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to do something real quick. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm reminded, um, my, my wife is, um, uh, is a teacher, okay? And she now and then receives very strange gifts. Okay, from little children, okay? But when I say strange gifts, because it comes in different forms. Like <laughs> today, she told me she got a gift and it was a, a crumpled paper, okay? And I opened it, there was nothing inside, but it was like an envelope, a okay, white envelope, like paper. And it is supposed to be a letter inside. She said, no, no, there's a letter somewhere, just look for it. And, and I picked up the letter, okay? which is again um, a, a paper which is torn unevenly okay and there this girl little girl okay um she must be what i don't know six years old okay um and she is written with her hand i can see the handwriting it's a little girl written she she's written something like uh teacher I love you. I don't know why I love you. I don't know why <laughs> I like you. Okay. But I think I like you and I love you because you teach me about the past. She teaches social science, which is about history. Okay. Wow. So I like the way she went on sh sharing something just because you teach me about the past. I like you and love you. Now I have to admit when I first read it, I was going like, ah, oh, come on. You don't make sense. And then I went like, oh my goodness. How beautiful. She's appreciating the gratitude for what her teacher is doing. 
And for her to write that, she was in the moment. And that word, those words came from heart. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, to me, that was, that's a great example of what I think you're pointing to, that gift. Okay? And from that mm -hmm. space, the gift of this moment, when we do anything, it has that quality which doesn't come from a busyness, the busy head, mm -hmm. okay, the noise from that place. Okay? It, it has a very different quality. And, 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 and um, if, if there was a master's in, in um, figuring things out, okay, how to figure out the noise in the head, Okay. I would have had PhDs by now, many PhDs. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm noticing it just doesn't make sense. Mm. The noise just doesn't make sense because it's not telling me anything about this moment. It is either telling me about the past or it is telling me what can happen. But the absolute truth is <laughs> both are lies. Because it, it's, it's like, I don't know who said this, um, whatever it's telling about the past, it's a perspective, a memory which is stored in my mind, okay, which changes, mm -hmm. which changes when I'm in a better mood or when I have a better perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that storyline keeps changing. <laughs> and what it's telling about the future is an absolute lie because there is no way for me to know what's going to happen like mm -hmm. that's an absolute truth it's period we don't know what's going to happen next next moment so listening to a lie but innocent that's innocent versus being here in the now which is real yeah makes a lot of sense to me now like really, like really, really, okay? It's not like a choice. Oh, no, no, I'm going to be in a moment when I'm with my, with my child, okay? But when I'm going to be working on a project, I'm going to operate from my head, okay? It doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know what would you say about that. It, it, it doesn't make sense because it, it feels... I don't know what would you say. It feels effortless when that child wrote those that little letter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure she didn't think about those words. Those words just were flowing. Came to her. <laughs> yeah. It just came to her. That's exactly the word. It came to her. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, she didn't think about it for two days before she wrote that letter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For children, it's absolutely natural. They live in the now until we teach them a different thing. But just to point out that one example, like uh, a few, I think it was a few months ago, I was working with my daughter. She's three years old. And um, so we have been in the children's park and we were walking home and I started to talk. She, she, she speaks a lot, like she talked about everything. And um, so I was telling her, Honey, when we arrive home, uh, let's play this game and then we prepare dinner together and blah, 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 blah. And we were holding hands, you know, and she's like small. So she watched it on me and like, mom, we're in the street now. Like, and I was, yeah, yeah, but we, when we arrive home, we will do this and that. And then she was like, we are here now. Like, can we talk about that? Like, there? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, Mini Eckhart Tolle, you know, like, do you know Eckhart Tolle? Uh, yes. He's the author of a, the, a very famous book the power about of being now. in the present, yeah. the power of now. But she was right. She was right. So when one, one thing I want to clarify is that when we are speaking about living in the present moment, at least for me in the past, I was like, okay, I was hearing that idea, like, yeah, yeah, living in the present moment, nice, nice metaphor. Okay, yeah, sometimes I'm here, like, but I didn't understood it completely until I started reading Steve Chandler. 
Steve Chandler is a very well-known coach. He's called like the godfather of coaching. He has more than 37 books, I think. And he has one main book that I, I'm like in love right now with that book. I'm translating it to Spanish for my personal use right now, but it's called Time Warrior. And it speaks everything about being in the moment. But the wonderful thing about the book is like reading Steve, it's like having a conversation with a mentor that's speaking straight to you that is not only talking about, okay, yes, let's live in the present moment and metaphors. He's actually telling you the practical side of that. Like, okay, how do I do it? You know, how do, not how do I do to live in the present moment. He speaks about how can I stop removing myself from the present moment in every area of my life. Okay, so I, want you to, start... I want you to repeat that. I want you to repeat that last line. Okay, I love your last line. He talks about not to being in the present moment. He talks he about, how... about stop distracting yourself from the present right. moment. So okay, what because... I'm hearing you say, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm coming in there because we... whoever I have spoken to, it felt like it's an effort to stay in the moment. Mm -hmm. we've got to do I something the same. to be in the moment I felt the same yeah in the past yeah. I was sure like how do they do it you know I don't I don't get it yeah and what I'm hearing you say which Steve Chandler is saying too is we actually take us out of the moment because of the mm -hmm. habit of thinking exactly like it's realizing that we are already there in the present moment and Stop making things to remove ourselves from the present moment. Let, let's, let's give a straight example, okay? Because I love the practical side and I want everybody to take something from here. This is example. We are doing the Facebook Live. So actions that I took, simple common sense to be focused right now. So I have the Zoom window like open. I don't have any other window. I have it in full screen. My mobile is turned off. And I'm here. So that could sound like, okay, logical. No, you're going to do a Facebook Live. Of course, you're going to do it. But let's take those actions to my work. Um, as a coach, or let's change it because as a coach, when you're in a session, you are like right there with your client. But let's say as a um, translator. So if I arrive to my office, you know, and okay, I'm going to start translating, I open the document, oh, I need water. So I go get up, go to the kitchen, I need water. Oh, um, what's the weather like? Uh, maybe I'm cold, like, do I need? So I, again, I get distracted. If my phone, oh, a notification, maybe it's a client, I have to check what's happening. Oh yeah, they need that file. Oh, I'm going to just stop for one second, I'm going to send that file right now to the interruptions. I interrupt myself once and again and again and again. Of course, it's, if it's a life or death situation, I'm not going to say, oh no, sorry, I'm very focused right now. Oh, but your child had an accident. Oh, I'm focused. No, <laughs> come on. But we have forgotten about blocking time for ourselves. What if when I was translating, you know, sometimes when you have to translate um, an idea that is something very related to the, the, their culture, you know, to the Spanish speaking culture kind of, you have to figure out exactly how to say that. You have to find kind of the same idea. It's not like word by word. Sometimes when they are using, when they are saying a cliche or something like that. So it involves a lot of creativity. So maybe I was like relaxing, thinking about it, seeing if the idea come to me, one notification, Facebook, another notification, one email. So I stopped my process. Maybe I was about to arrive to a wonderful way to say that, but I interrupted myself once and again and again and again. And 
other way that we interrupt ourselves are not with actual interruptions, but by having multiple like lines that comes from us to the future, you know, like links, like, okay, yes, I'm working on the translation, but remember, I have to send that to that client, and yes, and what I'm going to do by, for the supper, oh, the, my, my girl birthday is going to be in one week, blah, 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 lots of voices inside of my head thinking about the future. So how do I solve this? Should I say, everybody shut up? It doesn't work like that. It works with common sense. Having like, let's say, another example, I have to organize my daughter's birthday. So instead of having that in my mind hanging all the time, I went to my calendar, I chose a day and a time, and I blocked two hours to organize everything at that very moment. Of course, maybe I would need more than two hours in different days, but just by that action, my mind is relaxed because my mind knows that that thing is going to be taken care of at one precise day and time. So it's not hanging in my mind. L let me give an example of um, a laptop or a phone, okay? what, what, what you're saying. Okay? Now, there used to be a time I used to have multiple applications open at work, okay? multiple Excel sheets open, okay? Word documents open, and I never used to restart my, my, my laptop because I was working on multiple projects at the same time. So, which means a lot of effort for me to go op reopen it. So, I will just keep it all open. Now, what I didn't know, which I know now, which is what you're saying. When we do something like that, our laptop actually slows down. <laughs> in reality, those projects are all running in my mind like the hard disk processing all of that. My fan used to, the, the laptop fan used to blow all the time. You know, like, like it, it used to get heated up and, and I, I, can, I can sense the, the hot air coming from my laptop. <laughs> and finally it crashed one day. Okay, it really crashed and I lost all data. <laughs> mm. What I know now is we have limited headspace, which is an absolute truth, okay? Our thinking brain has got limited capacity, okay? And we have limited heart space too, which means that's where creativity comes through, right? I don't know if that's the word you would use. This is the word I'm loving these days, which, which is the spiritual space where the words which I'm speaking right now, I'm not thinking about it, it's coming through. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I know exactly what I'm going to say next. It's just, it flows. So mm -hmm. that comes from a deeper space, a heart space, a spiritual heart space. What I'm hearing so when Steve Chandler talks about non-linear time rather than linear time of nine to five. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And this is like going deep in that mm -hmm. 10 minutes three minutes, one hour, okay? And doing that one task, like laser beam focus. Okay. Yes, and also I want to point out this, like we are now sharing what we are understanding about what Steve Chandler shares. And I absolutely ask everybody, go and get his books, like go and read Time Warrior, go and read Wealth Warrior, go and read everything that he's sharing because he's sharing with an open heart completely in service and with a huge amount of common sense. Um, so when he speaks about nonlinear time, he makes it very extremely simple. Like in nonlinear time, you have a call to action. Like everything is, you, you do things like right now or never, or you assign a capsule of space and time in your calendar, like the example I did with my, my daughter's birthday. So uh, another example, like I have, um, I'm helping a client to create an ebook. Okay. So I'm, I'm helping that client also to, to move into nonlinear time because we are, we know that, the, I mean, we have learned to have a to-do list, you know, full of actions, 
and then you make one thing and one thing and tomorrow you have another to-do list and it never ends it's like you do stuff and then you die <laughs> it sounds awful but we are like very used to live just by doing stuff and then going to sleep exhausted so when steve talks about nonlinear time and the title of the book is time warrior and he explains the word warrior warrior it's it has a little bit of violence it's intentional why because you have to have the clear intention of making a decision i'm going to do this now yes okay now i'm going to focus and do it now i'm not going to do it now when i'm going to do it never then it's never it's out of my mind or when I'm going to do it next week, Friday, 6 p.m. Done. I mean, done in, in my mind is like in a different place. So I am focused and I have to choose. I have to make decisions. I'm using a sword, you know, and I have to like remove everything that is not necessary. So one very good exercise that I'm, I'm doing with, with the people I'm helping to keep um, living their lives in this nonlinear time is that one of the first things is like just sitting down you know bring a coffee or something that you would like to drink and write down a list of everything that you have in your mind as a project as a problem to solve as a task to do everything like just download everything once you have that list it would be amazing if you know exactly what your values are what you're choosing in life and then you check with each task is this necessary is this according to my values it is going to be useful you know because sometimes we have things that we can delegate that we don't really need to do and that we think we should do but we don't really want to do so you remove things from your list when you realize oh no i, I don't really i don't want to do this like never or i can ask somebody else to do this or whatever and you start then then you have the list with the tasks that are still there that you want to do them, but you can do everything right now. So you start assigning places in your calendar. Now we have so much technology, we can use it in our favor. You know, like I use Google Calendar as, as if it was, I don't know, an angel. <laughs> and, and because we can assign times and reminders and everything. And it's not that I assign something for a different day and then that day I say oh I don't feel like doing it you know like no I do it because a time warrior you know decides what to do and, and do it now and what I'm seeing more and more is that every time I say okay I'm going to do this now when I finish I feel like a feeling of acceleration you know like um Wow, when you complete a project, even if it's small, even if it's one step, you, your energy gets recharged. But because all your energy is focused in right now, it's not divided attention. And another thing that Steve says in his book, uh, and it's powerful and it's extremely simple, is that one hour of undivided attention equals three hours of our normal attention. So just imagine what you can do with that time. And we are not saying, uh, another thing that I want to clarify, we are not saying, okay, now let's fill our calendar with a lot of things to do, you know, and let's focus. We also need time of nothing. We need time to have long walks, to slow down, to be in silence, to listen to music, to listen to the birds, to be connected with the people we love. And I don't know you, but in my case, the best ideas that I had in my life, I had them when I was doing nothing, going for a walk, washing dishes, you know, like just looking at the sky. I didn't have those ideas when I was thinking about it, you know, like in my computer, okay, I have to find a solution, like it doesn't work like that. So the wonderful thing is that we can explore all of this together and keep going. And it's not changing the way we manage with time. It's leaving one habit, habit out of our lives. We have the habit of multitasking. 
we were told that that was the best way to go. You know, if you want to be successful, if you want to uh, get somewhere, get somewhere, <laughs> not here. Let's multitask, you know. And actually, if you want to be successful at whatever we do, the best way to go is to be in the present moment, to be where everything is happening, to be connecting. It doesn't matter in, in what you work, if you're a coach, if you have a store, if you're whatever, but just check what's the difference when you serve a client, being in the present moment, really listening to what they need and being in service. And compare that situation with when you just serve them quickly, you know, you're thinking the next one, you know, you're like, is that client that was served quickly, you know, with your mind kind of half there, is going to come back? Are you going to grow? Are you going to be successful? Those are the questions that I have right now. Yeah. Uh, what you're reminding is a difference between achieving results versus achieving deep results and impact okay um, I, I remember one of the um, examples Steve's mentioned in that book about imagine you had only one task in hand in that whatever time you you decide even if you can want to do it in three minutes okay mm -hmm. three minutes right I think we can find three minutes to do a task which I think I don't want to do <laughs> okay and, and that reminded me of of i don't know who this person is called frank uh Tarkenden. he said something like if it's not fun you're not doing it right <laughs> so when i'm imagining the reality being when i'm imagining things it feels hard because obviously i'm i'm using my creative powers against me and more often when i play with as little as 3 minutes it feels simple and not difficult. <laughs> that's all I do. Three minutes. Okay. And and that's that's one of the, I think, play exercises he gives in that in that book. And, and, and I'm just loving that. <laughs> Chunking and, it down. Yeah. The and then what happens is that like, let's say that I don't know, I I I have already like decided that I'm going to do today uh, some task and I'm, I don't know, I woke up, not very, I, I'm feeling like a little bit of low mood, not really feeling like doing it, whatever. So I know that if I say myself, okay, instead of dedicating half an hour, let's just do three minutes, you know, just three minutes. What happens every time, even if I say it's not going to happen right now, is that You want to know what happened minute, with me? What happens? Tell I me. snoozed my alarm, that three minutes alarm, uh -huh. multiple times, and I went on for 45 minutes. Exactly. You keep going. Yeah. And that, and, yeah. and he says that, but I didn't, it didn't make sense. So if somebody's listening, this may not make sense. If, if you're trying to figure out how does this work <laughs> when you really play, and, and, I, and I tried this multiple times. I kept on snoozing the alarm for another three minutes, another three minutes, another three minutes. And I, <laughs> it it became interesting. It became mm. something like, oh, okay, let, let me, I can do a little more. Three more minutes, three more minutes, three more minutes. It's like using my resource, my focus, and my headspace to my advantage rather than abusing it with, I'm sorry I'm saying this, but innocently abusing it, filling it up with stuff we don't want to. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I think he calls it as a warrior, where you, you just cut the distractions, which is not required right now. Now, Exactly. A time now, warrior doesn't have any link to the future. Nothing. Like, nothing. It's really here, and it, it has focused attention. One quote that uh, has uh, Steve in his book, is uh, from um, oh, this karate fighter, Bruce Lee. Yes, yes, <laughs> The name Bruce came Lee. with this, you know, I did this and Bruce Lee, like, show up. Uh, so Bruce Lee said something like, um, the successful warrior uh, is, the one, is the promedio 
person, you know, that with laser focused attention. Like a successful warrior is somebody like just like us, you know, it's nothing they don't have anything special. But what they have is laser focused attention. So it's not like we are born, okay, these people have laser focused attention, these people sorry, they don't have it, like gone. No. We all have it. Like how many times when we were children, our families had to say, hey, it's time to dinner. Like, come on, come here, come here. We, we had it. We had it. So it's just going back to where the way we were and again, become playful with life because life starts being a game again. There's a lot of energy there. That's the invitation. Like it's not only like, okay, yes, manage time this way this is so great it's like come and play and experience more peace of mind achieve more no more for quantity more because like you get surprised like i did so much in this time oh my god perfect more free time you know so it's a different way of saying this and i would love to know if anybody has any questions no, there, there because questions. we are here for them I'm I'm going there now. Yeah. And wonderful. So Shaila has asked a question. Um, at work, one has to do so much. Often when I'm doing one task, I suddenly remember something else that I have to do or had to do. My mind moves. <laughs> mm -hmm. now, I, I I think we've mentioned that. I think you've, you've pointed that out. Okay. Um, but, I don't know but if I can ask watching. Something. Yeah, go on. Yeah, please. Yeah. I, I, I just had a session with a client. She, she works in, in a, in a prison. She has, a, um, uh, she's an officer, but she has, a, um, she has a lot of people like in an admin way to be in charge of. Um, so she wanted to speak with me about this way of going nonlinear. Uh, and just imagine, she was like, I can't make it, you know, I have this job, I have so many things, so many responsibilities. And what we did is that we first started to pointing out all the tasks that she has, the ones that really need her, the ones that she could delegate. And then we created like a weekly plan when we um painted with colors we did it in a very playful way like what time is like devoted time to do the things that you need to get done so you can really live on time to go back to your home to be with your family she was like staying at work like two or three hours more every day and we had this wonderful conversation around time but not only about time we actually like created a plan because it's common sense actually it's common sense and the results were amazing she hasn't been staying longer hours at work you know and she's now teaching their staff you know and say telling everybody buy steve Ch chandra's book you know like we, we are that book is going to be a huge success this year i mean it has always been but um so it has a practical side so if you have multiple tasks at work, you need one day to take more time to write everything down and assign a place and a time for everything, even for checking emails. You know, like uh, when you're at work, um, you have to assign a time. Okay, I'm going to check emails like twice or, or three times per day at this certain time. I'm not going to check like every 10 minutes because then like if I have to do a special task and I'm checking email, like while I'm doing that, then I'm having undivided attention. So what I could have done in one hour, it's going to take me three. What about if in these three hours, I use one hour to the task and a different hour to check emails and actually reply? That's another thing. We check emails, we read everything that is there and we reply later. One warrior doesn't open any emails if, he, if they don't have time to respond. Maybe there is one email that you like open and read and it needs a little bit of reflection time to see what the response would be. Okay, but you have it in a folder that says, you know, like to think, to respond tomorrow, like you create a system, but you allow your mind time to relax so you can be even more effective. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I hope it helps. 
I, I, well, I'm, I'm loving this. And uh, I don't know if Shaila is here. If, if Shaila is here, um, I'm going to ask her to comment if, if that helps her. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for some other comments. Oh, we've got Steve Hardison with us. Wow. Steve, Steve Hardison. Thank you for with us. <laughs> so Steve. Thank you, Steve. Steve Hardison has just launched a book that his wonderful wife uh, wrote with the help of many people about him and his life. Steve Hardison, for everybody that doesn't know, he's the ultimate coach. He's the coach of Steve Chandler. So just imagine that. <laughs> so thank you so much. We feel really honored that you were here commenting. Thank you. And, and one of the things Steve's mentioning is the sun never sets in the world of impact of Steve Chandler. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the impact that he has in the world. You know, I'm going to share something a little bit personal, but in my uh, childhood and, and, and as a young adult, I never had um, like a um, mature figure of somebody that is looking at life in a playful uh, way, in a way that speaks about honor and achieving things and loving life and loving to be in service with others. And one thing that really strikes me with Steve is that I found in him that, that figure, you know, that leader that shows me, you know, like, yes, you can do this. This is the way you can do it. Like, I actually, like, I read his books. I mark with color things. I reread, you know, and I apply and I explore and I test it out. Yeah. And he's always right. Yeah. So and, do the and same. The, the beauty of what, what you're saying here, one of the things I did, okay, even if you pick a small bit today, okay, this, this is my, um, my invitation to everybody here. Like, don't try to figure everything out, what you said. Just pick one bit and go and play with it. Like, one of the things I did after beginning reading Time Warrior is I switched off the notifications on my laptop, on my phone. And I used, by the way, iPhone has, has a beautiful, um, uh, you know, you can go on modes like focus mode, okay? Like work mm -hmm. mode, okay? Personal mode, mm -hmm. sleep mode. Now, I didn't know what that is, but it made sense <laughs> after I read Steve's book, it made sense. Oh, Apple is ahead in the game, okay? Uh, I'm an Apple fan, sorry, Android guys. Uh, <laughs> What happens when you go on that mold is you don't see notifications on your screen, which means no distractions, mm -hmm. right? And I go yeah. when I need to go to WhatsApp or mm -hmm. Facebook or email, right? So mm -hmm. that even helps me sleep better. But getting mm -hmm. up in the night to check my phone, it's a habit. All of us have like phone, we, it, we can either use it to our advantage, like a tool, like what you're talking about is these little tools rather than abusing our mind with it, which is very innocent because we, we don't know. Like if, if somebody would have told me this few years back, I would have loved it, okay? But what I'm, the thing is we all know this deep inside us because we are born with it. So what mm -hmm. Steve Chandler is pointing to is not something extraordinary. He's pointing to a natural way of being, Exactly. And that's and, what I love about it. <laughs> it and, resonates. And absolutely. And for the ones that doesn't know him, he's not a, like a, an enlightened man, like Jesus walking over the waters. He had a very tough life. And, and he shares with us in every book, his life story, different parts. And, and, and like, it, it's really amazing what he has been through and the way he changes things. So, he always says, like, if I could do it, you can totally do it, you know? And that's so refreshing and, and so nice because we, there are no experts. I mean, yeah. the, at least the way I see it, there are no experts in life. We are all students and we are all learning and we are all getting better at different things. So it's wonderful to think that, like, for me, it's such a gift that he has overcome certain things because he was able then to share all this knowledge to the world. And even when he's gone, those books are keep teaching people, you know? And so that's such a, such a gift for everybody. 
and the, and and we, I know we we are actually over both, okay. Um, <laughs> But, but the one last piece I want to mention, unless and until there are questions, guys, just, I, I yeah, I, I think we, we, we got to say what next, by the way, okay? As well, in case I forget. So, um, service. I thought, okay, some of us are in service because I'm a coach. I'm in service, makes sense, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, my dad has a tailoring business, okay? So we are in service, we serve customers in, in getting a good fit, suit, stuff like that. But it didn't make sense. When I began to study Steve's work, I realized we are either serving somebody or we are not. We are either in service to someone, which includes self, Mm -hmm. What we are talking about here, a time warrior, is if you're abusing your mind with all the innocent stuff in your head, the noise, let me call it that way, you're not serving yourself. So obviously, you don't have space to serve anybody else. The quality of work which comes out of it, that email, that conversation, okay, that project presentation has a very okay quality to it. Right. But what Steve's talking about is when you go laser focus, you are in service to yourself first because you're not figuring out, you're, you're allowing the energy to move you. Okay. The energy, mm -hmm. because in, in, in the moment, what I've noticed is it's, it feels simple. It yeah. feels easy. It feels enjoyable when you're breaking yeah. it down to tiny little pieces when you're doing it. Like, for example, even um, washing the dishes. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. enjoy doing that, right? But these days, I'm noticing like, hmm, that's some fun too, okay? Washing the <laughs> dishes. It helps me. When, in fact, my mind is very busy. I, I go do cleaning. I love doing cleaning anyway. And mm -hmm. it really helps me calm down, helps mm -hmm. me clear my space. Okay. So, so service, I'm coming back to that. Like, I think we are all either in service or we are not, irrespective of what we are doing. <laughs> we are yeah. all serving someone. And the yeah. more we serve, the more we get benefited through money impact and more. Oh, yes, but sense. also just because of being in service, I mean, the feeling that you have inside when you are just in service, just looking at the other person and, and, and finding what problem do they think they have yeah. so they, you can help guide them to realize like the truth so yeah. they can live a life like a prosperous and happier and, and playful life. But I want to point out something also like being a time warrior, of course, it creates a life that has more joy and playfulness and creativity, but it also needs determination. You're a warrior. So one thing that Steve speaks a lot about, and it, for me, it has been like absolutely clarifying, is that there's a difference between being in service, serving people, and pleasing people. Mm -hmm. Why do we respond so fast and quickly to every message? Because usually we don't want to let the other people down, you know. We want to be seen like, oh, you know, like they are good people, you know, they, they really care, they reply quickly, my message is like, and, and what would be in, in better services, if I have free time, uh, of course I can reply messages, but if I'm focused, the rest of the people would need to wait. And that's not the service, you know, because in this, we are now so connected with our phones, with the emails, with social media, with everybody. And of course it has two sides, you know, it's like a tool. If you have a knife, you can cook some wonderful food and feed somebody with love, or you can kill somebody with the same tool. So with all these technology that we have, we are very connected. We are just pointing out just make sure you are choosing when you connect so you can actually connect and choose when you are not connecting because you need to focus the time yeah. so it's time for us to become warriors in the way that we use time so we can have 
devoted time for our dreams to become a reality. He speaks a lot about also that. He, he points out an example, and I think it's wonderful. Like, we all have, at some point of our lives, study a new language or study some, to play some music with some instrument or whatever. So the only difference between those that are excellent at that uh, or the ones that are not excellent at that is that the ones that still doesn't know how to play the piano or to speak German or whatever is that they stopped. They stopped. I, I had took uh, French lessons when I was a, a little girl. I was studying English. I, I'm from Argentina, so I speak Spanish. And I, I was studying English and French when I was six years old. So at some time, at some moment, I had like some kind of confusion. I started talking in French in English class and in, in English in French class. So they decided, okay, let's leave French outside of the picture. And I never took it again, but it's a lovely language. But if I didn't stop at that moment, for sure, today I'm going, I, I, I would be able to speak French. So that sounds like, yeah, right. But think about it. Really think about it. You just have to choose what you want to achieve. It could be anything. And then you have to decide to not to stop. Because we stop. We feel insecure. We okay, is this my, my journey or not? Oh my god, like I'm like let's try a different way. Let's like we stop. If that's really what you want, don't stop. And you're going to get there. And that's also focused attention. I have chosen this thing, I keep going. Beautiful. Wow. Well, um, we're eight minutes over bold. Okay. So uh, what next? How do what would you say? What what next? How can we continue to support people? Because we when when we chose to do this, we didn't want this to be a one-off, like, okay, we do this, okay, we're done. <laughs> right. So what would you say, Azul? Like how how, how are we gonna support people who choose to uh, want to be supported? Well, there are multiple ways. One is that if you if you would like to have coaching sessions. Uh, with you mode or with me they can always connect with us and we can be supportive to to them to through coaching to uh, um you know i want to say something I, I, the other day i was speaking with a, a a group of coaches and and you know for us sometimes it's kind of like in, in some cultures in some countries when you say okay i'm a coach you have to explain you know okay what that's involved what does it mean? And sometimes people have this idea that the coach is like, okay, okay, go, get it. You know, like like kind of Tony Robbins style that it's good. I mean, it's not my style, but it's a good thing. But actually to have a coach is to have somebody and that is there for you, supporting you 100% with undivided attention, guiding you, to, for you to achieve whatever you want, but any change, anything that you really want, just imagine having somebody every week meeting with you, supporting you, guiding you. That's amazing. So if anybody would like to have the experience, they can reach out to you, to me, to both, like whatever. We are here in service. Yeah. And, if and you, the other thing. And if you don't know, sorry, Azul, I'm just coming in there. If you If you have never experienced a coaching conversation, okay, that's all right. Okay. Uh, we would like to give you that experience. Okay. And no strings Thanks. attached. No strings attached. What we're offering you is a complimentary, but a coaching conversation. So what that means is we're not inviting you to come. Okay. Let's have a chat over coffee. No, no, no. We're inviting you if you are dedicated about finding out something for yourself which is a challenge which is real for you or you're serious about achieving something and you don't know how to do that but you're ready to take help in a part of your life where you want help you're serious mm -hmm. about it okay you're not here to do window shopping you're here to shop mm -hmm. so what we are inviting you for is come let's have a conversation so reach out to us like we, 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 i'm going to put 
uh, you, you can message, private message uh, Azul or myself, right? And we can fix a time, which works for us and have a real coaching conversation about all that we spoke about right now, which can be intellectual ideas right now, which is not very useful, mm -hmm. but will help you apply it in a place of your life where you need support. Now that's an incredible privilege. Let me put it that way, because when I experienced coaching for the first time, it changed my life because it was like, imagine that I was living life with one eye and somebody told me, dude, you have two eyes. And I didn't know it. And I didn't know it. Too. That's how it feels because we don't always see things because it, it blinds us. Our habits mm -hmm. blinds us. And one mm -hmm. of the things coaches do, it, they help you get rid of your blindness. Yeah, they help you see clearly common sense, which you're not currently seeing because you're too close to it. Okay. You, you mm -hmm. can't read like this, can you? <laughs> so mm -hmm. we are in our life, so we can't see things clearly. Okay? But when somebody, how does coaching work? That person is not like this, you see? <laughs> so they can help you slow down, slow down, slow down. And you're able to see what's real versus what's imagined. Mm -hmm. exactly. so, so one step, if, if we're going to ask you to take is, if you're serious, just private messages and we're going to fix time with you to have a conversation and when we say if you're serious we're not saying like if you really 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 would like to see something new yeah. reach out we have a conversation no strings attached at all like just for the conversation and block some like we we can uh, schedule a day and a time but be ready to have a conversation like one hour or even two hours like we really want to be in service to help you to point out to see something new and then that you have that wonderful experience and we really love to do that yeah. and um, another chance is that uh, i'm launching a program if you would like to instead of being in one-on-one um i am launching a program called time warrior <laughs> yeah. because that's the perfect name and, and when we are going to be a, a group of people that we are going to really change the way we see time we're going to meet weekly um, we are going to have a, a way of being accountable with each other, you know, and the program is going to include also one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. And the idea is to start in December and do it during a couple of dates in December and then in January to start 2022, living from a different perspective. And then when the program ends, we wait for one month and we meet again to check how we're doing to check the results, to check if we need like something else, if you still have more questions and it will be uh, also support by email during the whole training, you know. So if you happen to need anything or you have any questions before our next meeting, you can always reach out. So there are multiple ways of doing that. And also there are scholarships available. I don't want anybody to be out of that uh, just because of uh, any economical situation. If you really, really I committed and serious that you want to make a shift in your life so that's what we have to offer today let's see and we'll post information about Azul's program okay, in, in the comments after after this session we'll do that I'll post that okay and like I said I'm repeating myself you don't have to join the program you're not here to sell you the program that's information there are multiple ways to support you and one of the ways is 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 this group program which has got coaching attached to it. If you just want to come and taste what coaching is, just private messages, we can have one-to-one -one conversation for you, mm -hmm. to, for you to understand um, what we are talking about, okay? So- And for you to see time. something new about the topic that is bringing you to the conversation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so thank you so much, Mood, for thank having you me here. Very, very much, Azul. I just want to quickly acknowledge for those of us who are still watching us, Praveen, Raj, Soumya, Prasanna, uh, Rajarajan, Mayank, mm. Rajesh Surana, Isaac, right? Thank you very much for staying on. <laughs> I, I think some of them just joined. Okay, so you, you can watch the recording to, to know uh, what happened. <laughs> 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 it's going to be on my page. Um, 
Thank you, Azul. This was fun. This was enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to you for having me, Peter. I really love it. And, and we can repeat any other moment that you want. Like, I'm here. Uh, I think so. We, we, we can talk about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And thank you for everybody for being here, for watching live, for the ones that are going to watch the recording. Thank you so much for your time because it's precious. Yes. As you can see. Yes. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye for now. Right. See you whenever we see you. Okay. <laughs> Bye.